Good afternoon. Good to see everybody out walking about. I heard Bernie said he almost had to have his window open. It was so hot out. So call the order. Roll, roll call, please. Mayor Mahoney. Here. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mayor Carlson. Here. Mr. Peterson. I'm here. Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mr. Ettinger. Here. Mr. Strand. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mrs. Sherling. Here. Mr. Grimberg. Here. Mr. Olson. Mr. Seljibold. Yeah. So we have a quorum. Excellent. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 23rd meeting, please? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Do I have a motion to approve the order of agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through E? I so move. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Mahoney. Yes. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Ebbinger. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Grimberg. Aye. That is everyone. Executive Director Report, Joe Paulson. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh, just a few quick items uh, this month of things that went on. Um, we did a presentation for Cass County Electric on their request about the diversion and construction of the diversion. Uh, so Chris Bakkegaard actually did uh, two uh, two day um, uh, updates for them uh, and their staff, and that was much appreciated. Uh, we also uh, had 21 volunteers from the MFDA staff and Jacobs and uh, quite a few more from RRVA and ASN that did uh, volunteer their time for the Sandbag effort. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we also did a presentation last week for the City of Moorhead on lands and flow easements uh, in executive session in our effort to uh, maintain alignment uh, for property acquisition on the Minnesota side. Uh, received a lot of great questions and had some great dialogue with the council on that. Uh, I did an interview with Joel Heitkamp on KFGO. Uh, most of his questions were related to property acquisition. Uh, he did want to update on the construction status and uh, said uh, he sees it every day as he's driving uh, south, uh, obviously with the I-29 grade race project and, and others. Um, and uh, he mentioned uh, how, how fast he believed the work was coming along, so it was a very positive uh, interview. Uh, we also had our staff at uh, many township meetings uh, this month, Eagle, Weiser, Harwood, and Raymond, um, and uh, we were also able to get the last channel township MOU signed uh, with Raymond Township, so uh, congratulations to Chris Bakkegaard on really uh, working on that effort for the past two years uh, and, find, and finding some resolution. Uh, yesterday at the Finance Committee, we also um, completed and, and got approved the Lower Otter Tail Restoration Project Funding Agreement, um, and that will be funding that is mandated by Minnesota DNR permit, um, and we'll make that transaction and fulfill that permit condition. Uh, certainly open for any questions. Any questions? Mr. Pepcorn. Mr. Chair, can I ask a quick question? So, Joel, can you talk a little bit about, obviously the flooding was mainly in rural Cass County, and, and Harwood is the area that's the most hit most of the time. Can you talk about how, in simple layman's terms, how that will help, especially in the Harwood area, once the diversion is complete? Yeah, absolutely, Commissioner Pepcorn. And this this is a good topic just to talk about publicly. Um, I believe the, the forum uh, may be running a story on, on this particular question here shortly. Um, but once the project is in place, it will, um, accept the water, the overland water, and the excess water from uh, the Rush River, the Maple River, and the Cheyenne, as well as all of the legal drains that are coming in from the west as well. Uh, so instead of that water coming in and moving overland through Harwood and through that area, it's going to drop into the diversion channel, and everything on the protected side will no longer be experiencing those flooding impacts. So, uh, and those are all passive elements. So they're there every year, whether we operate the project or not. The, those passive elements will be providing flood protection for that northwest area of West Fargo 
and the northern area up by Harwood. So it's it's something, uh, you know, obviously we talked about during the governor's task force and, and maybe periodically, um, but certainly it came up this year because that's where all of the flooding, uh, the worst flooding uh, occurred in this event. Uh, and people were asking that same question, how is the diversion project going to change uh, what this looks like? Uh, and it's gonna be pretty significant for that area for sure. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Well, quick, um, Joel, you talked to us on Monday instead of last week. Oh, sorry. It's that's been a long okay. week. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. Talking to us would make it a long week, so thanks. <laughs> thanks, Chuck. Any other discussion? Thank you, Joel. John Thank Packley? You. No updates. There's no updates. No. Oh, long say. Sorry. Uh, Terry Williams, are you online? Hi, Mr. Chair. This is Terry Williams with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, our monthly update for April, and you should have a copy of this in your folder. Uh, we'll start with the diversion inlet structure. The drone footage covers this nicely again this month. Uh, number three gate is in place, which allows Ames to finish the bridge over the structure, which is what they're currently working on. Number two, the Wild Rice River. Uh, great footage of that as well. It shows the newly directed river now flowing through the structure. The river, Wild Rice River was permanently routed, rerouted through the structure on March 31st, and it's quite a spectacle. We'll jump down to number five, the Red River structure. Um, the big, the, that first big pour that we've been anticipating, now it looks like it's going to be on the 5th of May. That will be uh, about a 24 100 cubic yard concrete pour and it'll start probably about midnight and finish at 3 p.m. the next day is the plan and this will be the first of several large pours for that 10 foot thick structure slab it's it's going to be pretty enormous uh drain 27 this is number six we've been um we received bids for that service contract and there was a bid protest we're working through in order to get that contract awarded. We should have that awarded probably within the next couple of weeks. Number seven, Drayton Dam, 54% complete. <laughs> Nothing much to report on that. Um, number eight, still paused. Work is still paused on SE2A. And then number nine for the design and award of future contracts. All of those contracts are still on schedule for the dates shown. One item added here is the Oxbow Hicks and Bakke ring levy reach. That's the last reach of that ring levy. And the core is designing that. Our 95% review starts mid July. And we plan to have an award in 2024 for that contract. That ends uh, my monthly update, Mr. Chair, unless there's any questions. Any question in the members? Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Southwest DCAI project update, Tom Fuchs. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Mahoney, members of the board. Um, Chris couldn't make it here, so yes, I'm here. I'll give the update design and construction for the stormwater diversion channel. Um, starting with design, um, we have surpassed 1,000 review cycles, um, information going back and forth, submittals, <coughs> approvals, so on and so forth. Um, we have 68 approved designs currently, 53 utilities, 15 non-utilities. Um, and we do have uh, a continuing heavy lift in the design department, design review. We, we currently have 90 submittals in review at, at the moment. Um, as far as construction is concerned, um, in the last month, you, you might notice looking at the map, it looks very similar to, to what it did last month. Um, we did just start, or the P3 developer did just start at channel excavation west of the interstate before the overland flooding in that area. But much of the last month has been uh, preparation for the flood, moving equipment to high ground, uh, berming portions of the channel um, to protect against overland flooding on the completed infrastructure, and then maintaining drainage throughout the uh, project right away in advance and during the flood. Um, we, I believe Amy's going to give a little bit more color around this, but hats mm -hmm. off to ASN Construction. Um, 
they did go really above and beyond, um, stepping beyond the right of way in some cases to make sure that um, water and snow and ice um, and, and drainage was provided even even beyond the project right away, including some individual volunteers sandbagging efforts uh, homes in Argusville. Um, looking forward, uh, we will pick up just as soon as things dry out, dry out enough with the uh, remaining excavation in Channel Reach 3, just, just west of the interstate. There are bits and pieces of excavation uh, remaining east of the interstate as well, resuming shortly. Um, in the very new, near future, we're expecting the same thing as soon as things dry out. Uh, the bridges at County Road 4 and 31 as well as County Road 32 to start commencing. Um, those are alignments off alignment, so no pipe, no bypasses necessary. Traffic will run on existing uh, road infrastructure there. Um, in addition, the I-29 uh, corridor, really, I-29, BNSF, County Road 81, we'll start to see bypass work happening there as well. We have to construct bypasses to um, move off alignment in those locations. Uh, drain inlets 29 and 30, uh, reaches 1 and 2, starting shortly as well, and the Maple River Aqueduct. Uh, one additional note, the, the map here does a great, uh, is a great representation. Um, however, if we were to include all utilities, it would get very murky. So we will see a, a very uh, strong push for utilities starting soon as well, all the way from I-29 to I-94 in advance of channel excavation. And uh, that's the statements I had prepared. So I'll stand for some questions if, if needed before. Any questions? Thank you, Tom. Thank you. You got some drone footage to show us? We do. I'm Tom Fuchs, Senior Construction Manager for the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. Over the past several weeks, we saw in-town portions of the FM Area Diversion Project used as the Red River Rose. More than 38 miles of levees and flood walls have been completed through Fargo and Moorhead in addition to numerous stormwater lift stations. This year, as the river crested just below 30 feet, we got a visual of what the level looks like with the in-town protection in place. Once the project is completed, as much as 37 feet of water will safely pass through town before the diversion needs to operate. While the entire project won't be operational until 2027, there were a couple of big milestones achieved in the past several weeks that moved us closer to that goal. The Wild Rice River was rerouted to now flow through rather than around the Wild Rice River structure. As March ended, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers contractor completed excavations connecting the engineered channel to the river, allowing the waters to flow straight through. During extreme flooding, the gates on the structure will lower to control the amount of water entering the metro area. Speaking of gates, the third and final gate is now up at the diversion inlet structure. Crews mounted the 47 and a half ton radial arm gate that's 50 feet wide and 26 feet tall this month. They also installed bridge girders on the structure, which is now 93% complete. Work will continue in the coming months and is expected to be complete later this year. East of the structures, work resumed on I-29, where a four mile section of the interstate is being raised out of the 500 year floodplain. Crews picked up where they left off before winter by continuing work on the borrowed ditch bridges. The approach slabs were recently poured at the southbound bridge and preparations have resumed for pouring the northbound bridge deck. As the weather continues to warm, motorists should expect lane closures and traffic shifts as the I-29 project will ramp back up and the roadway work will resume. Interested in following more of the progress being made toward permanent flood control? Sign up for the Diversion Current at www.fmdiversion.gov slash subscribe. Thank you. The wild rice is pretty impressive how much water is there, Joel. Huh? Communication teams update or is it going to be you? I'm going to pinch hit today, Mayor. Okay. So it probably won't be as in-depth as Amy could do, but I'll do my best. 
Um, so just to, we're really working on a number of videos. Um, our latest one was the Faces of the Diversion with Brandy Ani from ASN. Um, that was, that video has been getting a, a lot of great plays. Um, really kind of shows the, the contractor side of things. Um, so if you get a chance, uh, take a look at that. Uh, we did release the animated P3 101 uh, video in April as well. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, please do. Um, been getting a lot of great comments from the public and folks on the project of, about the video and how easily it explains um, you know, what a public-private partnership is and how it's working on our project. Um, quarter one analytics were in, so we had 343 hours of view on our videos uh, on our MFDA YouTube channel. Uh, we also had um, some media relations, so we did a construction update on KFGO. Uh, the Wild Rice River structure uh, got some coverage as well. Uh, I know the Corps uh, covered that on their, um, their outlets as well. Um, we had an overland flooding story in the form, uh, and we had some I-29 construction coverage uh, as well. And it's a pretty business as usual. Uh, let's put it that way. <laughs> Even with a flood event. <laughs> so I got to get Jody up here to have business, not as usual. So. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly has uh, more to share with you than I do. So. Okay, Jody Smith. <laughs> Good afternoon, board. Uh, so this first slide is an illustration of the properties that either we have acquired or we're in the position of negotiation. On the next slide down, you'll see an outline of our progress over the past month. You'll see in the construction footprint, it's approximately 1% increase. In the UMA footprint, it's almost 2% increase uh, month over month. The next slide gets into a little bit more detail with each of the locations, again, the southern embankment. Um, up a half a percentage point, so just sitting over a little over 68%. The upstream mitigation area is up almost 2%, so we're just below that 37% mark. Environmental easements are, are logging in about one, maybe one a month, um, so we continue to make progress on that. Um, but we're certainly our efforts are focused on the other property acquisition needs. The stormwater diversion channel, um, that is simply closings that have occurred. We have negotiated settlements on all of the properties within the channel footprint. Uh, some of those were sitting in last resort eminent domain, so it's a matter of being able to kind of close on all those parcels. The next slide then, again, uh, is a high level overview of the construction footprint and the UMA footprint, the difference between uh, owner groups and the parcels that we're working with. And then of course, on the last slide today, um, we have some key activities. As always, we continue to negotiate settlement agreements with existing eminent domain actions. Uh, we have received the final right-of-way request from the Corps for the remaining portion of the OHB ring levy. Um, there's just simply a, a handful of temporary construction easements that we did have. We need to extend a couple more so that they can complete the construction in that area. The Corps did come back and reprove um, our request to raise three roads um, down in Eagle Township um, in zones two and then map out nine properties from zone one. So we're beginning that process then with those property owners of acquiring the necessary appraisal and then completing negotiations with them. So we do thank the core for all the work that went into that. That took us several months to get through. There are a lot of conversations, required a lot of partnership between them and a lot of our consultants uh, to get that across the finish line. Batch six filing for eminent domain action was requested on five property owners. Uh, this morning, the Cass County Joint Water Resource District did authorize um, last written offers for two property owners. One of those already had a negotiation that the board did approve this morning. Uh, so hopefully uh, we won't have to file on, on either of those property owners. In the last month, six parcels and five landowners successfully closed. Um, and we have uh, had 44 farmland leases have been completed. I do want to thank the Cass County Joint Board this morning. I know Rogers online, that was a very lengthy board meeting. Um, it lasted three and a half hours, and I did kick one large agenda item off at the very last minute. So um, they were dedicated to the effort this morning. Um, they, we walked through quite a few of those. And again, the MCC JPA approved several um, today as well. So if my calculations were right, um, we did approve an additional acquisition of 18 properties today so and one last announcement uh, Jessica Warren is 
sitting behind me in the beautiful pink dress. She's not acknowledging that it's still cold outside. And so she has come over to the MFDA. She was with the lands team at AHOS. She's now our compliance specialist um, and she will help us uh, backfill the position of Madeline when she has her beautiful baby here, um, we think fairly soon. Um, and so you might see her in a little bit of a different position than you would have in the past and what you might see in about three or four months when Madeline's able to join us again. So open to any questions that you might have. Any questions? Thank you. Finance update, Mary Bernie Dardis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A finance committee met yesterday. Uh, we had a uh, approval of the bills of $6,871,312.89. Uh, Mr. Wyatt Poppenfuss was the gentleman that presented the bills as, as well as a financial report. Our net cash our position is $165,863,660. With that, uh, if there's any questions, I'd stand for them. That's all I have. Any questions? Paul, you're going to go through part of this? I was going to present to the uh, board the uh, a recommendation for approval of a uh, bid. Uh, this bid was for our property structure mitigation removal. Uh, it was advertised, and we did receive three bids on April 13th with IBI Industrial Builders as the low bid for just under uh, $473,000, uh, which was below our engineer's estimate. Um, we uh, are recommending approval, and since it is over $200,000, it does require the board's approval. It was approved uh, yesterday by the Finance Committee. Where are most of these homes found? Most of these are in the up, actually all of these are in the upstream mitigation area. Uh, so, and actually um, one of them is a, a seed uh, plant uh, storage area. And so screwed up my time. Uh, then the other one, uh, there's a couple others that were just cleaning up remnants of homes uh, on a couple locations. So. Um, wide, that's why you see a kind of a wide variety in the bill in the bid costs from uh, sixty thousand to two thousand. Very good. Any questions, Mary Curley? Thank you. Um, just could you remind me, Paul? What is our latest policy on the disposal of these properties? They just become the property of the contractor. Then yes, at at the um, uh, turnover we. Uh, turn the properties over to the contractor. Um, they have the right uh, to either sell them off and lower their bid price or to, to demolish them. They have that option. Um, we do include in the specifications if they are going to demolish it that uh, to allow for the removal of uh, and resell of the individual parts that way by uh, Habitat for Humanity, so coordination that way. And so we're trying to get as much utilization of these properties as, as possible. Uh, but uh, the demo, whether they're demoed or whether they're resold, we leave that up to the uh, contractor. Very good, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Thank you, Paul. Joel, you're going to talk about I Bailey. Uh, I, oh, I'm Chairman, sorry. We have to vote on I this. Need yeah. vote. I, I need do a have motion. a motion. So moved. Is there second. a second? Moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Mayor Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Gardis. Yes. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Ebinger. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Grimberg. Aye. Mr. Olson. Yes. That is everyone. Cool, I Bailey. All right, uh, just the information. Uh, I Bailey will start their 2022 um, financial statement audit for the authority. Uh, the engagement letter is in your packet, um, so no action to be taken. But uh, I do expect that when they complete that audit and we get the results, uh, we will have them uh, come to the board meeting and uh, explain the results. Good. Any other business? I would ask John Shockley to send out evaluations of Joe Paulson if you wouldn't mind filling those out. We'd like to 
<laughs> Chad left it for me, and I'm getting it's now getting to me, so I think we probably should get it done, don't you think, Chad? Yeah. So. Please do, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. So if you'd kindly get those in over the weekend, it'd be helpful, and then John and I will look at that and bring a report back to the board. Any other business? Move to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Aye.